Yo, back at it again with the inferior view of the skull. Today we're gonna go over the different foramen. Mm. Oh my god, it all went by itself. That's so cool. Uh, I'm just kidding. I did that because, you know, the videos are getting way too long. So I decided to just label it and then I'm gonna like guide it with the red marker because I realized that it's kind of all black and not so clear. So this is the base of the skull and this is the anterior portion and that's the posterior portion of the skull. So if you're looking at it from like the top down, you remove the scalp and that is what you're gonna get. So uh, obviously this is where the brain is supposed to go. As you can see from this giant hole, that's the form and magnum. And that is where the medulla oblongata is supposed to go and where the spinal cord is supposed to go. But let's start from here from the top. So here we have the foramen cecum and we have the cribriform plate. And the cribriform plate has the cristagalli and all these little foramen. And that's where the olfactory nerve goes through. So this is all the ethmoid bone, this uh, por portion that separates the um, nasal cavity from everything else. And, and then here we have the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. Um, this is what separates the ethmoid from the sphenoid. Here we have the optic canal, these foramen where the optic nerves are supposed to go through. And they're on top of the cella torsica. Oh, by the way, this is the orbital frontal plate. So your frontal lobe would rest on that. Now here we, again, optic canal. Um, that's where your optic nerves goes through. And it's on the cella torsica. Um, it also has the posterior clinoid process. And here we have the superior orbital fissure, where several other cranial nerves, cranial nerves three and four, they go through that. Now as we go down, we have uh, my favorite foramen, apart from foramen magnum, uh, we have the ROLS, which is a, an acronym for Rotundum Ovali Macerum Spinosum. This is Rotundum, it's round. This is Ovali, it's oval shaped and big. Lacerum, it's here and it's weirdly shaped and it's off to the side and it looks like it's a bunch of lacerations. I guess that helps. Spinosum is this tiny little one here that everyone always forgets. Spinosum, I like that name. Okay. So that's there and it's, uh, and then here we have a groove. If this was a 3D model, you would see it much better. It's a groove for the petrosal sinus. And then you also have the petrosal part of the temporal. Um, and, and that is where you will find the internal acoustic meatus. Uh, I made it visible because it's really hard to see. It's kind of like inside. Uh, here we have the basilar part of the occipital. Um, and then we have, here this is the hypoglossal canal. The internal acoustic meatus, by the way, that's where the um, vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve eight goes through. That's uh, basically all your sense of hearing and your balance partially. Uh, foramen magnum, we already covered that. Uh, here we have the groove of the sigmoid sinus. And this one I forgot to label. These are the posterior cranial fossa. That is where your cerebellum rests. So that's cool. Uh, then here we have the inter in, uh, internal occipital protuberance. Uh, here we have the groove for the transverse sinus. And that's the end. That is the end of this amazing journey through the inferior, well, the interior view of the skull. Oh, and by the way, there's the Circle of Willis thing. So there you go. Enjoy. I hope uh, you don't have a bone to pick with this video. Uh, uh, uh.